David, I'm trying to find my bed that hasn't <laughs> turned up for months now in those containers. It is fascinating what we're seeing. 65 container ships currently outside waiting in the waters. Usually there are zero. They're waiting there for about 11 and a half days on average. Usually that wait is zero days. The containers here are staying too long. Usually it's free for the containers to stay about four days. They're going over that. That is costs that are built in. But your perfect guest, Lance, just talking about it. Yes, there are. You can run a port 24-7. That's great. But the port here is telling us they need the truckers to work 24-7. They need the warehouses to work 24-7. The truckers we saw, they're waiting about five hours on average at times in the afternoon. They want to work, but then they're not coming in here through the night to be able to make the most of that 24-7 running. There are just so many chokeholds, so many pain points, and this operation is enormous. This is the second busiest container seaport in the whole of the United States. $200 billion worth of cargo on average per year. They need to be running at full capacity, but they need the rest of the supply chain to catch up with their 24-7 hour work. Yeah, I'm concerned about your bed and a lot of our Christmas presents at this point, Caroline, as a practical matter. So I want to go back down to Washington now and Josh Wingrove, who's been reporting on the White House efforts. Uh, Josh, you just heard Lance Fritz of Union Pacific say, look, if the White House wants to do something in the short, medium term, get some laborers into the right places, whether it's in the warehouses or it is in the trucking industry. Is that the way the White House sees it? I mean, in part, I mean, they, the White House sees this as, you know, sort of a, a body that has a little bit of arthritis in every joint right now. You know, there's part, delays at every part of the system. And I don't mean to rub it in, Caroline, but my chair just did get here. So, you know, <laughs> the, it, there's hope. It's coming. You know, things are moving. But, but the truck drivers are some of the, frankly, poorest paid, worst work conditions uh, employees around this whole thing, certainly more so than port workers who have a pretty good union, certainly more so than ra rail workers. And so, you know, it's not that there's a particular shortage of people holding con uh, commercial driver's licenses in the U.S. It's that they burn out and quit because the job tends to be pretty crummy. The Teamsters have urged, urged Joe Biden to say, hey, you've got to unionize these port drivers. They have to get the benefits of other truck drivers that are unionized or work for, you know, uh, companies rather than being individual contractors. So far, Joe Biden has been silent on that. He is trying to solve this, I think, to, you know, on the one hand, to their credit, they've been on this for months. They're not just waking up to it uh, now. But on the other hand, they do not have a lot of tools. A lot of this is private sector stuff. And the White House views its role essentially as a convener, as a bully pulpit. Frankly, the sort of uh, unspoken is, is an ability to shame companies or threaten to shame them if they need to, to try to get things moving. But that's where they are on this, David.